Oh, awesome. Okay. Hello there. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Cassidy Cash. If you've taken Algebra 1, you've probably seen me there. I wanted to jump on here and talk to you guys. Um, the way this is set up, this is my first time doing Facebook Live, and the way this is set up, I can't really see you um, here. So hopefully, I'll be able to see your comments down there. But what I wanted to talk to you about today is an issue that comes up with my high school students a lot. I tutor ninth through 12th grade math, and one of the issues that comes up is when bad grades are actually not bad. And I know that sounds so counterintuitive. So first, let's start with what is the number one rule of mathematics, right? And that is that mistakes mean you're learning. If you're not making mistakes, you're in the wrong math class. And so if you're getting 100% on everything, you need to move ahead. And intuitively, we know this, right? As adults, we know that when you try something new and you're doing it for the first time, you make mistakes at it. And so for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade students, whether it's algebra, geometry, trig, or calculus, when they're going through this course, this is the first time they've seen any of these concepts. They've never tried this before. They've never thought about the world in math terms before. They've never applied these concepts before. And so everything they're doing when they're turning in homework and quizzes and tests, it's all the very first time they're doing it. And as they're learning it, you would expect them to do some of it right, and then some of it they're going to miss. And so when I'm talking bad grades, I'm not talking about the normal amount of making mistakes in their math homework. I'm talking about students that are making low C's, D's, and F's. They're missing more problems than they're getting right, and it's just very bad grades. I'm talking about low grades. There are two main reasons that a student will make, probably well, probably three, main reasons that a student will make low marks. Okay, One is the one that you're already thinking, the lack of understanding. They don't understand the concept. They're not getting it, right? And that could be because they really don't understand it or because they don't have a motivation to learn it. And that's the first reason they would make D's and F's in a math class. The second reason is the one we're going to talk about today, and that's the idea that they understand more than they're able to write down. And so they actually need to move ahead into the next course. To explain this, let me give you an example. I had a student, and her mom called me up, and she said, Cassidy, I need a math tutor. And I said, okay, that's what I do. How can I help you? And she was so worried. She said, my daughter is missing all of her math homework. She just doesn't seem to be getting it. She's making all of these Fs. And, you know, I think maybe she has a learning disability. She needs to be tested. I took her to this big box tutoring place. And they said that, you know, she missed something back in third grade. Maybe she doesn't understand fractions enough. And, I just think that maybe she's being lazy. And I said, well, all of those are options. So let's sit down and take a look. And I went and sat down with her. And what I found when I sat there and watched her work through some, ugh, when I watched her work through, there we are, some of these problems, I noticed that there was a disconnect between what her brain was thinking and what she was able to put on the page. She understood the problem but it's like a 10-step algebra problem. And she knew how to do the algebra, but inside any algebra problem is all of this elementary math that you did before. The division, addition, subtraction, the fractions, all of this is inside there. And she was having to take a break from thinking about algebra to go over here and remember how to do long division and do this huge division problem by hand and then bring that back to the algebra problem to finish out the algebra problem, which was very taxing on someone that's trying to learn and apply the algebra concepts primarily. And so, you know, the mom was so confused, she thought, no, there's, you know, this girl has to be failing math because she doesn't understand things. And I said, well, she's able to talk me through these problems, and I think what you've actually got going on here is that she understands more than what she can write down, and she really needs to be able to use a calculator. And the mom just looked at me and was really confused. And I said, no, I'm, I'm serious. For these long division, addition, and subtraction, she, you need to take that off of her brain. 
let the calculator support her in those little bitty steps and let her brain focus on learning the algebra that she's doing. And when this girl started doing that, you know, she could get them all right then again. And so what this means for you at home is that when your students are making simple mistakes, they might not be because they don't understand what they're doing. And I know what you're thinking. You're going, how do I know why they're missing them? Well, that's a good question. If you're going through an Ask Dr. Callahan math course, our Algebra Through Calculus One, you'll know that one of the things we ask our students to do is to follow a particular process for homework. And this issue here today is one of the reasons. What we ask them to do is to first work the homework, obviously. Then they have to go back and grade it right or wrong. Just look at the problem. Is it right? Is it wrong? Wherever it's wrong, and this third step is the key part, the student goes back and identifies why they missed it. And they'll say, you know, well, I missed it because I dropped a negative over here, or I didn't read the problem correctly. And all of those kinds of things are called simple mistakes. A few of them are normal. When it's all of them, you need to look further. And that's what helps you as a parent, because you can pick up their homework sheet that they already worked for you and where they have already identified why they missed the ones they missed. And you can kind of look through and see, is it a concept issue or is it a simple mistakes issue? The simple mistakes issue might be because your student's being lazy. It, it happens. You know, maybe they're not slowing down. Maybe they're not paying attention. It could also be that they are going too fast and they need to slow down. It could also be that they understand what they're doing and they can't get it down on paper fast enough. For those students, you might need to look at a different strategy for homework. You know, maybe they don't have to show all of their work. Maybe they can explain to you that they understand the problem verbally or do something else to demonstrate their competency in the subject that does not involve having to put it all on paper. These are different ideas that you can use when you're working with your high school students. But the thing I want you to take away most is that bad grades don't always mean that your student is doing bad. So to quickly wrap this up and tell you if your student is getting really bad grades on homework in high school math, there are two strategies that you need to use to help identify whether it's a concept issue or a simple mistakes issue. The first one is to look at their homework for more than their grades. Remember that means looking at why they missed the problem and making sure that they're supported in the way that they need. Do they have a calculator for the easy mistakes? Are they having to write down too much? Those are the questions you want to ask. The second one is, is it all simple mistakes or is it concept problems? Sometimes students really will have a learning disability and that will show up in their homework. It's almost never that they missed something in third grade. It's usually that they're bored or not being challenged and that's what you're focusing on here. So hopefully that's encouraging to some of you whose students are sitting there going, but mom, I need to move ahead. You know, maybe you can consider that and help them look through their homework and what they're missing. If you would like to see some of our homework process that I talked about here today, you can go to our website. It's askdrcallahan.com. You'll look on Facebook at the little logo we have there. Um, that's how it's spelled. And then .com, you can look at any of our products. We've got our samples and our downloads from our teacher's guides that will show you this how to do homework process that I walked you through. And hopefully the tips that I gave you today will help you know how to look at that homework and tell whether your child needs some extra support or if they're ready to move ahead to the next subject. Have a great day, you guys, and thanks for joining me here on today's Facebook Live. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.